everyone, it's Lori and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about using brushes to add texture, color, creativity to your images. So using brushes has been something new that I have learned and worked on to master the past couple years. And what is fun is Photoshop gives you several brush tools that you can play with but you can also download a ton of different brushes for free. And these are so fun and can add some real creativity to your images. So I'm gonna show you today how to play around with these incredible tools. So to get started, let's first understand where these fun brushes are housed in Photoshop. So if you go to Window, you can select the Brushes option. And this is going to add brushes over here on your menu. So I like to keep my brushes over here under my history. And so again, to do that, just go to Window, Brushes. Now you also have brushes available in the upper left corner. And if we click on that, you can see the same menu. I like to keep the brushes open when I'm working on an image where I know I'm going to apply and use some brushes. So I wanted to make sure you knew where that was located. Now under brushes, you have several options and folders. Photoshop gives you some that you can use. You have some dry media brushes. You may have some special effects brushes, which are really fun. And you also have your general brushes. So under general, those are the brushes we typically use when we're masking in Photoshop. But you can also add additional brushes to your brush panel, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So a couple things regarding this panel. There is the brush settings is the option where you can select brushes by number, by style. Um, there's different options here. I prefer to use the brushes menu because I like to see the brushes as I'm deciding which one I'm going to use. I don't have the numbers memorized. So that is where I keep my brush menu. The next thing to know is if you click this little hamburger menu and you come over, you have options to add a new brush group. So that's if you wanted to create your own group of brushes, but here's the option to import. So when you select import brushes, you can actually bring brushes in that you've downloaded to your computer. So let me show you a great resource to get new brushes. So I'm going to come over and if you are an Adobe member and already use Photoshop, you can search Adobe Photoshop brushes. I will provide this link um, right here in the description of the video. But there is an artist, Kyle Webster, who works for um, Adobe Photoshop, and he has created packages of incredible brushes. I mean, these are just amazing tools, especially if you are a graphic designer. This is the impressionistic um, pack that I love. There is a pack called Concept for Special Effects, Charcoal. Um, and then he does brush packs for each season of the year. And so you can download some that may be your favorites. You can also get some pretty incredible inspiration from the way that he has used these brushes. So I love these spring and summer packs because they include a lot of leaves, foliage, um, charcoals, things that you can add to your photos in a really soft way for some creativity. So he just came out with winter 2023 and I just downloaded that one and we will play with it together um, in this video. So this is where you would select a pack, download it, and then you come back over to Photoshop and you'll go over to this hamburger, import and load those brushes. All right, so a couple other points when you use a brush. So let me just grab a brush and bring it over. You can increase your brush size using your bracket key or this size menu. Um, you want to select your paint color. So whether that's white or another color, you can double click on the foreground paint box and select a color from the menu. You can type in a hex code if you know the color. 
You can also go to color libraries. You've got lots of ways to pick a color. You can also use the color picker. So we could come over and select this kind of soft blue white color. And now that is in our panel, we can click OK. And that is going to be the color that our paintbrush will use. So that's a little bit about that. We also can decide the opacity. So you can come up and drag the opacity slider. But if you have your brush selected, you can also select a number on your keyboard. So we could do, um, let me get that turned off. We've got our brush, we could select five and it's gonna increase our opacity to 50%. And now we can see that that brush is a lot heavier. I can select nine and it goes to 90%. So you can see the differences there. All right, so let's jump in and play with this image and show I'll show you how I would use the brushes to give this a little creative, creative fun look. So the first thing you want to do is I have the background image. You want to add a blank layer so that you're not working on your original image. This will allow us to reduce the opacity, change the blend mode, do things that we may want to do to the layer. So always be sure you select and add that blank layer. All right, so let's go down and play with some of the new tools in the winter 2023 pack. So what I like to do is I just kind of start at the top and enlarge my brush and just see what these tools actually are. So we can see there's one called, oh, this one has leaves, um, got some different leaves, which are fun. I've thought about taking all of the leaf brushes and putting them in a leaf group. So um, I'd have them all together because I do like to use um, this one's called square bear. That could be fun to use maybe on a building. Come down and you've got these tree ones, boulders, circles, and then you've got these party. So this is where I got really interested and thought about this image is these are called confetti. Now we've got this set to a color, but I'm going to actually flip it to white and I'm going to just come in at 30% opacity. So I clicked the three on my keyboard and I'm just going to pop these in to give it kind of an icy snow look. Now I like showing you this brush because look at how the brush changes as we use it. That's what is incredible about these Kyle brushes is they alter so that you get that difference as you are, you get the randomness as you're playing with these. So I think that's fun to add a little icy, icy snow look to this image. Now there's a confetti too, and we can see this one's a lot bigger. Now I can make it smaller, kind of like the large size. And remember, anytime you select a new brush, your opacity slider has gone back to 100%. So I'm going to take this down to 20%. So I'm going to click the two and I'm just going to pop these in. Now at 20%, I'm not seeing it. It's pretty soft. So I'm going to go ahead and bump it to 50. And there we go. Now I'm seeing a little bit more and I probably could go even higher. So I'm going to select 70 and just see what that's looking like. Now, when you use a brush, you can just pop your trackpad or mouse to get that look. You can also brush with it. So you can drag it and come around your image if you're wanting it in a particular spot. But you can also, you know, do it very randomly. So we wanted to add a little of that ice ice onto our tree here. We could so you can just you can come around with it. So it gets take some getting used to and using the brushes. If you use a tablet and a pencil, a lot of people like doing that with the brushes. Um, so now that we've added all this fun ice, we've I kind of went overboard so that you could see it. We can come over to our layer and here's where we can make some additional tweaks. So I could reduce the opacity of this to make the whole thing just really soft. I could bring it up a little bit. I could also change the blend mode. So I could do light, lighten, I could do soft light, hard light, um, vivid, difference, exclusion. There's lots of different things that we could do to add some additional creativity. 
Now, if I decided I didn't want some of these, I could grab the eraser tool and I can just erase them. I could also apply a mask, but I do find um, the eraser works just fine. And you can do the eraser at varying opacities too. So if we just wanted to soften some of them, we can come in with the brush, the eraser tool. All right, so that's just a little bit to get you started thinking about brushes um, and adding different techniques to an image. Now let's go look at an image where I am going to come in and I want to add um, a little bit of pink to this background. So just want to soften um, and add a little bit of texture to this in a really, really delicate way. So first thing, we're going to add that blank layer so that we're working on that layer mask. Second, I'm going to go pick my color. So I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool and I want to select this really pale pink. Now we can see that color is there. I'm going to go back to click the B on my keyboard for brush. And now I need to select my brush tool. I'm going to actually go down to my favorites because I love this Cezanne. Now the Cezanne brush is in the impressionistic package, but I've moved it to my favorites. I really like this one to add a soft, subtle texture to an image. Now that is what the brush looks like, but that's at 100%. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to start with a 2, which makes my opacity 20%. I'm going to start with that and I'm just going to delicately click and brush this around my image. So I'm just wanting to add a little bit of this pink softness around really creating my own texture is what I'm trying to do. I like to use texture sometimes on my images and I have a whole collection of textures, but sometimes you don't have exactly what you want. And so this is just a great way to create some texture. So I've added this really soft and I'm going to go ahead and grab my eraser and I'm just going to blend it off probably at about 80% opacity. So I clicked the eight. I want to just get some of that paint off. Now I could have selected my, um, whoops, I clicked the wrong thing. So let's go back to the eraser. I'm not sure how I hit that. There's the eraser. Um, I could have selected the subject and protected it so that I didn't have to clean up. Um, for this video, I just want to focus on using the brushes in a really simple way. So if you are a master of selections, you could do that if you did not want the subject to be impacted. It is easy to do a selection and then you don't have to erase as much. But I didn't have I didn't have that much to erase, just kind of coming in soft and getting these edges. I don't want it to be too hard but I don't want to have paint kind of globbed on there. All right, now I like this first round of texture, but I want to I want to layer it a little bit more. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper and I'm going to select a little bit of a darker shade of the pink. And then I'm going to grab my brush again, the B key, make sure I have this Saison selected, enlarge that, and I'm going to do the opacity. Let's try 20% again because this is a darker color. So now you can see I'm just going to hit these edges a little bit. Now I'm doing this on the same layer, but you could have done a new layer so that you have all of your brushes separate. Um, that is up to you. If you're just getting started with brushes, that that's probably a good idea because then you have them a little bit separated. So just adding some dimension here, bringing that in, just to give this that kind of painted artistic look. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that eraser again. I'm just gonna come in and just clean up, especially just these little bit of edges. And when you, when you use these brushes, think about, if you've ever watched a watercolorist work, think about how they work they layer the colors. And so that's going to give you a much more painted look. They layer colors and they layer the texture on the image and then they blend it. 
So what we want to do next is we want to come in and blend it. And that's where we can use our opacity slider on our layer. So I can come in and just soften that. I could also come in and add some blur if I wanted to. I could add some additional texture or oil paint, but I really like um, just lowering that whole layer opacity. You can also change your blend mode. So look what it does if it's soft light or hard light. I could do vivid. I could do color burn if I just really want that color in there. Multiply is going to make it much darker. So that's giving us, you know, a really heavy texture. But I could bring that opacity down and that just looks very artistic. So I'm going to zoom in. Let's click over here so you can see. It's giving it that just nice texture look. So once you use your brush, think about when you're working with your brush, your opacity, your blend mode, but then also think about once you're finished, you can reduce the overall opacity, you can change your blend mode, you can really work to get the image the way you want it. All right, so let's go try another image. So this is an image where I just love these singular spring flowers and these in the background, but I wanted to add some more of this kind of purple um, flower back in this green area just to give it more of an impressionistic painting look. Now I have not edited this before so I'm going to be doing this one fresh with you guys. So I've got my new blank layer. I'm going to come over and grab my dropper and I want to select this soft purple color that's in the background, not the foreground. So there we go. We've got it selected. It's kind of that gray purple. Now I'm going to come up first to the impressionistic and I'm going to look at some of these brushes and what I'm going to do is just select them and bring them over to see what they do. And what we can do is just lower our opacity to maybe 50%. I'm going to see how they look as I pop them in. So that's not bad. Let's come down and see um, some of these others. And I may need to go find one that looks more like flowers. So this could work. So let's make sure our opacity is back down at 50%. So that's not bad to kind of make this look like there's some flowers in here. Just kind of popping those around. As if they're more blue or purple flowers in here. Okay, so that's one option. Let's continue to look and see. We've got this blocky one. We've got this one that's a little, little bit interesting. I'm going to take it to 50% again. Ooh, I really like that one. I think that is a little bit more in line with the flowers. So I'm just going to pop some of those in. And we can always come in and erase. So I'm just going to keep going to see what happens here. I'm just kind of blocking these in like a, paint is, a painter would do. Kind of softening that. And just popping them in in different places. Okay, so we've, we've looked at the Impressionist. Now I'm going to go and let's look at Spring 2022. And there are several in here. Let's look at the In Bloom. These are going to give us petals. I'm not sure that I want petals for these. So let's go back up and see about, this one is called pellets. And there's another pellet. So the, this might add some additional texture. So let's be sure our opacity is back at 50%. And yeah, I'm just going to want this to kind of look like there's a meadow. Um, so I'm just layering again bringing this in to add some dimension and just some fun to this image. A little bit of um, dimension there. Okay, so we've tried lots of brushes. We've just kind of made a big mess here. And so at this point, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and reduce the opacity of this layer. So I'm just going to soften it. Next, I'm going to try some different blend modes. So there's the overlay, which is really what I was kind of looking for. Um, soft light, hard lights too much. 
Vivid Light, that would be fun if I wanted something really whimsical. There's Lighten, Screen. I think Overlay is going to do the trick. Now I can increase the opacity maybe just a little bit. And now I can grab the eraser. And for some of these where I don't really want it, I can just come in and remove some of those larger ones just to um, soften it a little bit more and not have as much going on. All right, so I like the dimension that I've added. Now what I could do is I could also come in with another brush and do a little bit more texture if I wanted um, in that kind of um, purple color. So I've still got that color selected. And so let's go back up to our watercolor. And let's see, we've got this one that's kind of um, watercolor basic. There's real watercolors. Um, there's just all kinds of watercolor options. I like these that are a little jagged. And so I want to, my color disappeared. So I'm going to go back and select that color again. And I need to be, I'm going to start a new layer for this one just so that we have it um, separate. So we've got the color. I'm going to go back to that brush. And now, oh, it's at 100%. So don't forget to lower your opacity. I'm going to click the two. And it's not working. So I'm going to come and scroll that down. And now I'm just going to softly add in some of this purple color in behind, kind of layering it with this green. So it's really, really light, but I just want to bring in some of those purple hues. So that's the way that I like to use the brushes to add some color, to also um, layer where you're adding the pop of texture. So we could come down and try some other ones of these. Oh, this one's kind of fun. It's adding like a, oh, it's like a wash. So I'm going to make this really large. You can see what that one's doing. So that's got a lot going on. I'm going to undo that. Maybe just um, pop it a little bit. All right, so this is what our image looked like before. And this is after. So just giving it some texture, some dimension, a little bit more purple. And then you can just continue layering and playing. Um, we could decide we didn't like that layer. We like it brighter. We could change the blend mode on that layer. Um, we could do vivid. So your, your options are really kind of like the hard light on that are really endless. Um, so I hope that you will consider playing with brushes and doing some fun techniques with them. I'm going to be doing a part two video where I show you how to create your own brushes and use them in your images. So look for that in the next week. Thanks, everybody.